Hi, this is Matt Monahan of SA International, and I'm here today with Trevor Takaro. He's one of the leaders of the Oregon State University Global Formula Racing Team, which has won four of the past five Formula SA Michigan Championships. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some of the rules changes for the 2015 season and how the vehicles are going to be affected. Uh, thank you for joining me, Trevor. Thank you for having me. Uh, I guess just to get started, what are some of those key rules changes and how will they make an impact on the vehicles this year? Uh, so the biggest rules change appears to be uh, the aerodynamics. Um, so in 2011, they opened up the rules and made the available um, area for wings, under trays, and things like that a lot bigger. Um, and a lot of teams went to that, and now they're shrinking it back down. Um, we're here to give us a new challenge and to uh, slow the cars down a little bit and make them safer. Okay. And then uh, there's some little changes as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, like the um, structural changes to the monocoque chassis and uh, um, noise changes for the exhaust system. Okay. And, and from what I understand, these rules that were just instituted, they'll be in effect for the next two seasons. So will that be a change uh, as opposed to having the rules change every year, kind of helping the planning for coming seasons? Yeah, they've been trying to do that the last few years to make it a little bit easier on the teams. Um, so yes, we plan to have very similar rules in 2016. Um, remains to be seen how big of a rules change happens in 2017, if that's just another iteration or what. Okay. I, I also heard that they were talking about uh, upping the engine size, uh, possibly to 750cc. Uh, are you familiar with that, and how do you think that would have an impact on the competition? Yeah, I think the, the motivation for that is pretty interesting. I think the idea is to um, make it easier for all teams to have a good engine choice. Um, as we understand it, in some areas of the world, it's very hard to get um, 600cc sport bike engines. Um, and when you go up to 750s, you get some of those um, uh, larger motorcycle engines um, that may be available in that part of the world. Um, granted, power is still going to be regulated by the 20 millimeter air restrictor. So a bigger engine um, may give you more reliability at the expense of some weight. Um, it's certainly running in a different RPM range for the same power. Um, so it's interesting. Um, and I think but we like the idea of having more variety in the competition. Okay. And how do you think the aerodynamics rules changes will be affecting vehicles this year? Is it reducing the size of the wings, or is it a downforce issue? Um, certainly everybody's going to have a challenge clawing back a downforce that they had before. Um, and I think that is the, um, the thing we'll be seeing from everyone. If you looked at some of the cars that have already come out, people showing off their, um, their first CAD models or um, some parts they finished, uh, a lot of the cars look um, designed very aero heavy um, to try to get as much as they can out of the limited space. Um, and then I guess it does, it'll somewhat change your priorities because once you've maxed out what you can do with aerodynamics, you have to focus somewhere else to be able to get back that speed. Okay. And with, uh, was, is light weighting more of a focus this year? Uh, obviously, I, your, your team employs a, a variety of different ways of, of developing parts in terms of carbon fiber or uh, 3D printing even. Uh, is that more of a focus this year? Uh, I mean, I think it, it sort of always matters. It's always something that we, we care about, um, but it's not the most important thing, um, especially given that it's a student project, uh, making sure that the uh, team members get parts that will work first um, and then, then light parts after that. Um, and then as far as materials go, um, one of the things that we think is really interesting about this competition is that it, it teaches you a lot about um, when some materials are appropriate and when others are, and there is no perfect wonder material. Um, you may, people may look at our car and say, wow, it's all carbon fiber, like those GFR guys, that just carbon fiber is their favorite material. Um, and I think we just uh, like to think of new ways we can use it, um, but it's certainly not the, uh, the golden bullet, so to speak, for, uh, for materials. So you see on our car, um, steel, aluminum, magnesium, titanium, um, carbon fiber, plastic, uh, rubber, kind of everything. And uh, every one of those has a place in its engineering function. Okay. And I know speaking with you last year, one of the keys to your success was uh, driver training in advance of the competition. How do you balance that with all the other struggles that you have right now trying to get the vehicle just finished? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a trade-off. and It's a challenge. Um, you know, the ideal would be um, getting the drivers to just be driving the car uh, every weekend and as much as you can. Um, a lot of times those drivers are also your key engineers. Um, so obviously there's a time conflict there too. Um, for us, driver training is, I think, the most important thing as soon as the car works. Um, and uh, we try to structure our testing so that we can do both effective driver training and vehicle development. Um, sometimes that means you can do those in parallel. Um, sometimes it means you have to make a priority. And um, we definitely treat the driver like the most unknown in the engineering system, which means um, 
we can't just put them in the car and say, go figure it out, go fast. Um, they're just like us, they're humans. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming up on a, a pretty fun time where everybody's gonna be taking the wraps off their vehicles and, and putting them on social media. Uh, what's that like for you guys? Are, are you interested to see what the other teams are doing? And I'm sure there's a lot of interest in what you guys are doing as well. Yeah, it's, um, it gives you a good reference for where you are in the year two. Um, it's really nice to see where other teams are. Um, it uses a good motivation tool for our team members, like, you know, see you got Missouri S&T driving. Um, you know, that car is, is not done yet, but it's obviously working already. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's a good benchmark for us to, to measure ourselves up against. Um, and then, especially with a new rules change like this year, you're always wondering how do people solve that problem? Like, how do they figure out how to get enough downforce? Um, how do they package the exhaust system? Um, did anybody do something new with the turbo rules, which just changed? Mm. Um, so that's, that's kind of exciting. And then, yeah, we're always looking for reactions off our car. Um, we think we just did some pretty cool stuff this year. Um, last year, we had some pretty big reactions to our front wing. And uh, so we hope we um, we see some interested reactions to what we've done this year with the chassis and aerodynamics package. Okay. And then finally, collaboration is a big focus in, in the automotive industry, as, as well as for, for formula racing as well. So how does that work with in terms of competitiveness, but while also having collaboration among the teams? Uh, I mean, it's, it's nice that it's um, a student project. So certainly the, the stakes aren't quite as high, and a lot of us will end up going to work at the same companies. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so you see that a lot, especially in the U.S. Um, and... Uh, I think that's nice to have a little bit of competitiveness to try to prove you're the best. Certainly that's a motivating factor, especially for me. Um, and it's also nice to be able to say that you can see somebody halfway around the world who's going through the same set of challenges you are um, and solving them their own way. Um, yeah, and be able to kind of see that at competition. And then I guess ultimately it is still pretty collaborative. The fact that we have, um, you know, an FSA online forum uh, FCA.com, I guess. Um, and uh, there are people that actually contribute to that, ask questions and share information. Um, and the fact that at competition, the pits are so open. So people actually welcome when you come to their pit and ask about their car and um, you know discuss how you solve problems. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for your time. This is very helpful, and I think everybody's going to appreciate it. So thanks again, and uh, best of luck this season. <laughs> thanks, Matt.